All right, fellas. All right. Rumors, man. Uh, rumors. Rumors. What the heck? This time of year, camera rumors are just everywhere, and there's some camera thingies coming up, like, I guess it's Photokina or whatever. I'm hearing rumors of Panasonic coming up with a new full frame camera and a new mount. You know, just as Nikon and Canon are coming out with full frame mounts and here comes Panasonic with a full frame mount, looks like, looks like we don't know. They think it was broken by uh, 43rumors.com on the on 31st, last, what, last Friday? 31st of uh, August, 2018. And they have a cool picture of a GH5 that's rendered with a bigger mount and a full frame sensor on it. Some of you who are camera buffs know all about this and this is not anything new to you, but for a lot of people who are fishermen, who are really just now getting into the cameras for the first time, they don't know the difference between, you have to go back to the time of film, actual celluloid. Photographic cameras use 35 millimeter film, all right? And the film ran this way through the camera which gave a bigger area profile there. Motion picture film used 35 millimeter film, but it was the different orientation. The film came down this way, right? And that set a more, a longer, a wider, but shorter field of view, which a lot of people would say is very close to what we call APS-C, an APS-C sensor. It's really just Super 35. Now a true Super 35, sensor is bigger than an APS-C sensor, but comparable. Assuming that the rumors are true, and a lot of times they are, I think these companies sort of leak out information to these websites to sort of get the scuttlebutt going and start building up the, 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 the rumors, just like in movies and stuff. But uh, will the Panasonic, Panasonic full frame be photographic full frame or will it be Super 35 or motion picture full frame? What do you think? My personal guess is going to be photo. Uh, it's going to be cine. It's going to be motion picture full frame. Here's why: When people buy a Panasonic camera, they're even a hybrid camera like the GH4, GH5, GH5S. They're buying it for one reason: they're going to be shooting video with it. It's their daily vlog cam. It's their. It's what they're going to use it for. It would be better off if they just go Super 35. Just take the Super 35 sensor that's in the Panasonic EVA1. Just give it the same sensor or some version of it. But you know, of course, the processing in you know mirrorless SLR won't be the same. That's fine but you already have a sensor that's essentially full frame as we would know it. It's just photo, it's just motion picture full frame instead of photographic full frame. I think that's the way to go, you know. What would I like to see in a Panasonic full frame mirrorless camera? For me, you, what you really need to do is take the G5S and the EVA1, sort of combine those two and that's your new full frame camera. Call it a GH6 if you want. Call it a, you know. I, next thing I think they need to come up with a two versions of it. Come up with a more photographic version of it. Maybe the photographic version needs to have a photographic full frame sensor. And maybe the cinema motion picture video version needs to have a Super 35 sensor in it. I do not think they need to abandon the Micro Four Thirds format. It's the closest thing that we have to a universal mount as to the old M42 mount, this old screw mount, like um, back in the 40s and the 50s and whatever. My guess is just like you have companies like Nikon, Canon, and um, others who have a full frame sensor and then they'll have an APS-C smaller sensor, I think with Panasonic, whatever their full frame sensor is, that's gonna be their top of the line product and these, the Micro Four Thirds will remain, will become their new budget, uh, low cost uh, product. Nikon has the D5 or the D850, and then they have the D500 as their APS-C lower cost version. Maybe the G10, because it's been 10 years since the Micro Four Thirds, that's a decade. And they can take all that they've learned with Micro Four Thirds and pump that into a new mount. And it can be awesome. I really think it could be awesome. But I think they don't need to get rid of the Micro Four Thirds. I think what's interesting is how is the new full frame mount gonna 
compared to the Nikon Z6 and the new Canon EOS R? That's the real. That's the real question. That's what everybody's got to know, right? One of the thing. One of the things that I don't like about these rumors. Oh, what does this mean for Micro Four Thirds? Are they going to get rid of it? Well, we don't know. We don't really know that they're even coming out with this new mount. It's just rumors, right? That's what's the problem with rumors. It, look, Panasonic I don't, is not going to leave people hanging. The GH5, the GH4, GH5, GH5S are just too popular to just kick to the curb. Even if their new full frame is a bestseller, I still think there are gonna be so many people buying GH4s, GH5, GH5Ss, that if they got rid of it, they'd be shooting themselves in the face. All right, not in the foot, in the face. Everybody's trying to get on the full frame uh, market. Now, Fuji's pretty smart. They're, they're saying, okay, we're gonna keep APS-C, which to me is full frame. It's essentially Super 35. And then they're gonna, now it looks like they're gonna try for their medium format. Now, Nikon obviously has the full frame, but will Nikon come out with an APS-C version of the Z6 and the Z7? Will Canon come out with an APS-C version of the EOS R? We don't know. But we know that Panasonic already has a great little camera in the GH4, the GH5, GH5S. We know they have good cameras in the very cams. These are big $35,000 cinema cameras. The EVA1 is sort of the $8,000 version of that. What if they come up with a camera that's positioned between the GH5S, which is what, $2,200 or something right now? and the $8,000 EVA1 and positioned it right between, right, right between, so that it, it is, is cheaper than even a Blackmagic Urza Mini Pro, a little bit more expensive than the G5S, but gives you full frame capability. And I think another thing they have to do is they gotta give us better audio in camera. I hate the audio in these SLR cameras. I'm a musician. In a former life, all these cameras are horrible unless you get the true cinema cameras. There's no reason why they couldn't put an XLR preamp, a solid XLR preamp in the camera and a solid uh, preamp that I have on the bottom here in the camera. There's no reason they can't do it, especially if it's going to be as big as a D850 or something. A lot of you aren't listening to me, right? I think it's got to have 10-bit 422. Now, whether it records 10-bit 422 internally or externally, I don't really care. Uh, I think 10-bit 422 internally would be great, and then raw externally would probably be the way to go now. Probably got to be 120 frames per second, slow-mo. I think they probably should go ahead and come out with a photographic version and a video version, just like they did with the GH5. Got GH5, GH5S. You got, you, just like Nikon, Z6, Z7. Sony has a 7 III. A7S and A7R, you know, sort of a generic, a general version, then they have a photo specific version, then they have a video specific version or uh, skin tones. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I hate Panasonic's color sides. <laughs> I hate the way the skin tones come out. It, it, Panasonic needs to get skin tones. This is the one thing I think that Panasonic just, and I know some of you are gonna say, well, if you get the GH5, it's better. Or if you get the GH5S, it's better. Okay, I'm not interested in better. I'm interested in getting the job done. And when you think about it, Blackmagic, Canon, Nikon, and Fuji are, are just knocking it out the park on skin tones, period. So those are my thinking, but what do you think? What do you think Panasonic ought to do? They should they go Super 35, or should they go put photographic full frame? Should they have a dual version of a camera, or just get one really solid all-in-one camera that does sort of everything? Do they need professional audio in camera, or is that better just left to better uh, solutions outside of camera, like I have with my DXA Micro Pro? Do you think that um, do you think they'll outsell? Say the new Canon offering and the EOS R, or the the Nikon offering. Do you think more people would begin to gravitate more towards these higher cost cinema cameras? Let's say if they had a $3,000 uh, full frame, more video oriented uh, camera, would, would $3,000 be the best price point? And then they can just lower the cost of the GH5 and the GH5S to better compete with the Blackmagic pocket cinema camera? What do you think? Comment down below and I will See you guys on the next one.